Let's learn about imaging and pulmonary manifestations of HIV. This is an MD and DNB exam question and through this video you're going to get lots of content to write your answers. The pulmonary manifestations of HIV depends on the level of immune compromise which is indicated by the CD4 count. When CD4 count is more than 400, there can be bacterial infections, mycobacterial infections, etc. When CD4 count is between 200 to 400, there can be recurrent bacterial infections, mycobacterium tuberculosis, lymphoma and lymphoproliferative disorders. Coming to CD4 count less than 200, they can be pneumocystis carini pneumonia, which we are going to discuss in detail, and disseminated tuberculosis. CD4 count less than 400 causes pneumocystis carini pneumonia, atypical mycobacterial infections, cytomegalovirus, Kaposi sarcoma, and lymphoma. Now let's discuss in detail about opportunistic infections in HIV. The bacterial infection can be streptococcal, staphylococcal, etc. Fungal infections like pneumocystis carini, cryptococcus and aspergillus infection. Mycobacterium includes tubercular and non-tubercular mycobacteria and viral infections like cytomegalovirus and influenza. We will be discussing only the imaging findings. On chest x-ray, streptococcal pneumonia can show a patchy area of consolidation which is also seen on the CT imaging consolidation with air bronchogram. Pneumocystis carini or gerovisi pneumonia can occur in low CD4 count less than 200. Symptoms are non-productive cough, fever and shortness of breath. And on imaging we can see x-ray showing perihilar haze which can progress to frank consolidation. These findings can be also seen on the CT imaging as perihilar ground glass opacities or consolidation with associated interstitial thickening. There can be subplural sparing and pneumatoceles can occur leading to spontaneous pneumothorax. Moving on to the most important that is aspergillosis infection can present in various forms. Aspergilloma can occur in a pre-existing cavity. There can be allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis known as ABPA. This is a form of hypersensitive pneumonitis. There can be semi-invasive aspergillosis or invasive aspergillosis. This is of two types that is airway invasive aspergillosis or angioinvasive. Discussing each one in detail, aspergilloma can occur in a pre-existing lung cavity which would have formed because of TB or sarcoidosis. Symptoms are hemoptysis. On x-ray we can see round to oval soft tissue with air crescent sign, classically known as monoid sign. On CT, we can see air crescent sign with a fungal ball which changes its position with respect to supine and prone position of the patient. Moving on to allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, the risk factors being long standing history of asthma. Symptoms include recurrent wheeze and low grade fever. On imaging, we can see the fungal elements and mucoid elements filling up the bronchi, which is seen as homogeneous tubular opacities more commonly in upper lobe known as finger in glove appearance. Semi-invasive aspergillosis also known as chronic necrotizing aspergillosis is a histopath diagnosis of tissue necrosis. Symptoms are chronic cough with sputum and fever. On imaging we can see unilateral or bilateral consolidation with cavity formation. In airway invasive aspergillosis, we can see bronchiolitis appearing as central lobular nodules with tree in bud pattern of spread. And there can be bronchopneumonia which appears on CT as peribronchial patchy areas of consolidation. In angio-invasive aspergillosis, we can see invasion of small to medium pulmonary arteries by the fungal hyphae. On imaging, this can be seen as consolidation with surrounding ground glass opacities classically known as the halo sign. This can also present with pulmonary infarcts. Next fungal infection is the cryptococcosis which can present as nodules or consolidation with hilar or mediastinal lymphadenopathy. 
Moving on to mycobacterial infection, this can present as different variants. When CD4 count is more than 200, it can present as reactivation of TB. When it is less than 200, it can present as features of primary TB. Other features can be extra pulmonary tuberculosis. When HIV and mycobacterial infection coexist, we can see immune reconstitution syndrome, which can present as new lymphadenopathy, new parenchymal lesion pleural effusion, worsening of old lesion and fever. Viral infections show very non-specific features. Most commonly cytomegalovirus shows diffuse ground glass opacities and patchy interstitial opacities. Influenza can occur showing ground glass opacities or patchy areas of consolidation. Lymphoproliferative disorders in HIV, most common presentation is lymphocytic interstitial pneumonitis. On imaging, we can see nodular interstitial thickening with or without ground glass opacities. Next is the Kaposi sarcoma. We'll discuss the imaging findings. Present is bilateral perihilar reticulonodular infiltrates. There can be flame-shaped nodules or hemorrhagic pleural effusion. This was in brief about pulmonary manifestations in HIV. Please follow, share and subscribe. Our Instagram handle is Radiology Doodles. Thank you.